Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Venus and specifically about how Venus might actually redefine our understanding of exoplanets and help us discover more habitable worlds out there. Welcome to What The Math. So first of all, let's actually talk about what makes Venus so unusual and so special. I'm going to remove atmosphere here for a second and show you what the surface may kind of look like. One thing about Venus is that it spins or rotates extremely, extremely slowly. This is actually one of the more well-known facts about Venus. Its rotation is about 1.8 meters per second, which means that a single day on Venus you can kind of see it right here under motion, it takes about 243 Earth days. This also means that a single day on Venus is actually longer than a single year because its orbit is 225 days. Because of this, Venus actually rotates in a synchronous way. Basically, it spins backwards. While most things in our solar system move or rotate this way, Venus slowly rotates the other way. Uh, and the other really interesting thing about Venus is that its atmosphere, which I'm going to bring back in a second, spins faster than the actual planet. As a matter of fact, the atmosphere of Venus rotates a single time around Venus in about four Earth days. That's a, a huge, huge increase in comparison to the actual planet. If a rotation of a planet takes 243 days, the atmosphere spins about 50 times faster. Now one thing that I actually wanted to start with is uh, mention that because of the proximity to the Sun, Venus's rotation is actually influenced by the Sun quite dramatically. As a matter of fact, um, we would actually assume that Venus would be tidally locked. In other words, that it's face is always pointing toward the sun and then the dark side is always pointing away from the sun but that's not the case because it does spin but just very very slowly and so something changed the rotation of venus making it asynchronous basically making it spin the other way what is that something well today most scientists assume that it's either the sun itself or the tidal effects from the sun and today, most scientists actually think that it's really the atmosphere that caused Venus to spin so weirdly. So a lot of the rotation is actually most likely influenced by this really, really thick atmosphere on Venus. And specifically, uh, there's actually a word for it, and this is uh, more well described in the video that I posted previously about the super rotation of v Venusian atmosphere. But basically, the super-rotation of Venus is the reason why it spins so strangely. But that's not really why we're here. We're here talking about exoplanets. And so based on these assumptions, several studies actually try to identify uh, how important is the thick atmosphere for the rotation of planets. Now, we're going to go to TRAPPIST-1 for a second, because this is really kind of what we're trying to explain here. TRAPPIST-1 has seven Earth-like planets, and today's assumption is that all of them are tidally locked. But using this new uh, thinking and several studies that are trying to identify the actual effects of atmosphere, we can now kind of start thinking about the rotation of these planets a little bit differently. So first of all, let's make an assumption that each of these planets has at least some atmosphere. And here we're just going to give one atmospheric pressure or one bar to TRAPPIST-1e. Now, the uh, actual assumption here is that this would be enough for this planet to actually start having slightly different rotation. And as you can see, it also turned liquid or basically turned into a habitable planet. Um, so the one atmosphere here would be enough to start influencing the rotation of the planet. And so instead of a, being a tidally locked planet, it might actually acquire, once again, a synchronous orbit. In other words, the rotational period could be actually higher or possibly lower. Uh, and this means that instead of being tidally locked, like we currently assume, this planet might be slowly spinning around. And because of this, all 
sides of the planet actually receive uh, solar radiation or radiation from TRAPPIST-1. Now, I think we actually overheated the planet a little bit because I now see the continents and that's because the water has started to kind of recede. Yeah, the temp temperature here is 135 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit too high. Let's change this a little bit and make it uh, slightly lower than before. Okay, here we go. This is a little bit better. Now, so what does it actually mean for uh, planets like TRAPPIST-1e or really any other planets we discover, assuming that they orbit around a red dwarf? Well, this just means one thing. It means that we don't really know how these planets spin and how they rotate. If a planet has atmosphere, any atmosphere and thick enough to basically influence its rotation, it means that planets that we think are tidally locked might actually not be tidally locked and might be orbiting asynchronously, kind of like Venus, or even faster than we think. So the planetary rotation can definitely be influenced by the atmosphere. And the thicker the atmosphere, the more influence it will have on the rotation of the planet. And the other thing that might also influence the rotation of a planet is, of course, a moon. So if this particular planet TRAPPIST-1e also has a large enough moon, kind of similar to our own moon, I guess, it might uh, influence the rotation of the planet even more. So one of the reasons Earth has rotation of 24 hours is because of our moon, not really because of the atmosphere. So the closer the object is to the star, the more likely it's going to be influenced by its tidal interaction with the star itself. And the farther away it is from the star, the more likely the atmosphere and the moons will play a role in it as well. And it looks like we actually lost this moon because I didn't place it in a stable enough orbit. And so all of this indicates that we don't really know much about these planets. We don't really know about many of the planets in terms of their rotation and of course in terms of how they behave and what's on their surface. And so for all we know, all of these planets in TRAPPIST-1 system could actually be spinning asynchronously, kind of like Venus, and not be tidally locked. And this would also mean that the chance for them to be more habitable is increased quite dramatically. The current assumption is that they only have liquid water, if there is any liquid water, on the twilight area right here, with this area being completely scorched by the star and this area being completely frozen. But this might not be the case if the atmosphere actually changed their rotation. So in future studies, we definitely have to consider both the atmospheric layer, the potential moon that might influence the rotation of the planet, and possibly even tidal interaction with the star itself, all of which might be responsible for changing the rotation of various planets. And the farther away from a star uh, the exoplanet is, the higher chance it has of having non-tidally locked rotation, and thus more chance to be habitable to humans and of course organic life in general. So all of these are actually good news to us. So thank you Venus for giving us hope that a lot of these planets here might actually be habitable after all. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the rotation of Venus and also about habitability of planets and their rotation in general. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.